a primary component for a human to interact with a machine with a computer, in my opinion, is a keyboard. You can take my big monitor, you can take my, I don't know, nice mouse, but don't take my keyboard, please. You could probably prefer to type on an on-screen keyboard with your mouse, but I'll probably pass. Hello guys, my name is Inel. On this channel, we talk about Golang, databases, distributed systems, and in this case, keyboards. So if you like that stuff, maybe consider subscribing. So before we start talking about this ZSA Voyager keyboard, let's just briefly mention a couple of words, like generally about keyboards. So this is a classic keyboard that we probably all know, and it is so-called a staggered layout. It's staggered like in the sense that the rows and columns are like not aligned to each other at all, right? The design of this layout is basically done for typewriters. So machines that physically hit the paper with, with some sort of hammers that will then leave the paint on the paper, right? And the reason for a design like this is basically to prevent all of those hammers from like jamming and hitting each other. But unfortunately, because it was so widely spread, the original computer keyboard makers like wanted to, to have something that is familiar to people. So they just stick to this design. And unfortunately, it is with us till this day. What this means is that basically this keyboard layout was designed for machine and not us humans and our human hands, right? So that means that we can and we should do much, much better. If you peek into a keyboard rabbit hole, you will quickly realize that there are some strange things happening down there. But generally all of these like ergonomic keyboards have more or less three things in common. So the first one is like they are split like either in physically two halves, right? Or maybe they can be on a single board, but but like with separated two sides. Why is this important, especially for like bigger dudes, is that you can spread it out and you can like sit nicely with your shoulders opened like this. And also your hands will sit like in a natural position, something like this, right? Rather than the usual the usual position of our hands with a classic keyboard. The second thing is they are so-called ortholinear. So if we see this, you can see that the layout is like in this in this uh, column oriented fashion. And why is this important is like it nicely follows our like natural finger movement like up and down and not like this staggered design when you don't have a rule. And also what you, what you can see is, as well is that the rows are not horizontally aligned. And the idea behind it is that we know our fingers are not like the same length. So for example, here, the pinky has to do minimum travel to hit like the letter P. And the third thing is that they are programmable, meaning that you can map and configure your keys however you want. And this is really important because generally keyboards like this, we have less keys than your standard keyboards. So we need a way to like have everything what we need. And I know there's software to configure keyboards like on a operating system level. Like for example, what I use on Mac OS is a Carabiner Elements tool, but it is not nearly as powerful as what you can do with, with, with keyboards like this. And also when you configure this keyboard, the configuration stays on the keyboard itself rather than on your machine. So if you need to switch machines, all of your config goes with your keyboard. We will see this in a moment. I tried a bunch of keyboards. And when it comes to like these split ergonomic keyboards, for a long time I was using uh, Ergodox keyboard also from ZSA. Then I was using this also really, really good keyboard. Kinesis Advantage Pro 360, I think, something like that. And there are like a bunch of others that you can 3D print yourself. Uh, assemble it yourself and stuff like that. But now I will share with you a couple of reasons that I think that this ZSA Voyager keyboard is probably the best one out there. So first of all, it is mechanical keyboard. It has this, I think, uh, chock low profile switches. It is also hot swappable, meaning you can like switch and change uh, these key switches. In this particular keyboard, I have like red linear switches, I believe. The build quality is really good. So if you can see here, this is like a metal backplate, feels really, really solid and feels like 
a premium product. And also it comes with a bunch of spare key, keycaps. So if you check this out, like it comes in this like nice way presented. And here you can see, first of all, we have spare switches and a lot of spare keycaps. I hope you can see this well. So basically if you like on a Windows, you have like Alt keys. If you are on a Mac, you have command option and stuff like that. So really, really good. And best parts about it is like, it has this really, really sleek design, right? Check this out. Isn't this beautiful? Really, really nice, sleek, low profile. I'm a generally uh, fan of low profile keyboards. Frankly, this Magic Keyboard is still one of my favorite ones. So if you compare it with this Kinesis keyboard, you can see the difference. This is like a good keyboard, really comfortable keyboard, but I don't know, too bulky for me. And because of this, it is much more portable. It actually comes in this like really nice pouch. It is almost like a wallet, a big wallet, but still a wallet, right? <laughs> It has 52 keys in total. And this is where the programmability part comes into play because we need to utilize like different layers to get everything what we need, like numbers, symbols, and stuff like that. And this number of keys and this layout in general is like, I think perfect. It doesn't have a bunch of unnecessary keys because you can really configure it nicely. So you don't actually need a bunch of different keys. Like for example, what I like is we have like these two thumb cluster keys, two keys for each of our thumbs. And I think it is a sweet spot, maybe three, but everything beyond that is like almost unusable in my opinion. Like again, for example, this Kinesis, there are like one, two, three, four, six keys per each thumb. It is way too much, man, way too much for these thumbs to handle, I think. And also, even though I have, I have bigger hands, they are really hard to, to reach. And all of the keys above, and keys here are like, I don't know, unnecessary for me. I know people like to have a lot of keys on the keyboard, but trust me, if you configure it nicely, you don't need them because the point is that you want minimum travel uh, with your fingers. So everything is more or less one key away from the home row, right? You don't want to stretch. You don't want to reach all of these corners and stuff like that. So this number of keys is, I think, a sweet spot. It has, of course, backlight. I personally don't care about RGB and all of that nonsense. But what I actually did found useful in this case is like when I switch to different layers, I can assign a particular color to a particular key. So I am aware like where I am and what is going on. So for example, if I hit this layer, so this is a default layer, I don't have any backlight on it, except for these two keys that send me to a different layer. And on the other half uh, is the same thing. So for example, if I hit this layer, you can see how it switches. I configure those keys with some shortcuts and maybe like this, you can see here. So really like actually useful in this case. I will talk about these layers in a moment. And the last thing, and I believe one of the most important things in this whole package is programmability of the keyboard itself. But the way you do this on ZSA keyboards in general is, I argue, the best you can find. Let's see it. Okay, so this is Oryx, a web-based web UI for configuring all of the ZSA keyboards, including ZSA Voyager in this case. It is a proprietary software, uh, like only for ZSA keyboards, but the proprietary part is only this UI. But the software that is actually running on the keyboard itself is a well-known QMK a firmware that is actually open source. I will not focus on my particular uh, config here. If you want me to do that, I can make a video only about that. Like for example, to see why I think that home row mods is not the way to go. But what I want to show you is like generally how you use Oryx, how you configure stuff and how you then save everything to your keyboard and stuff like that. So first thing that we can see is that you can configure different layers, okay? If you use this standard keyboard, you are using layers, whether you know it or not. Basically, when you hit shift key and you get a symbol instead of a number, you basically activated a different layer. But with these keyboards, ZSA Wager as well, you can configure a bunch of different layers and you can like go crazy with those. 
so what we can see here this is my like the default layer it is a standard qwerty layout i was considering maybe switching to colmac or dvorak i don't know but i don't think uh, i'm ready to go that far at least not right now and people also usually ask me like uh, is it hard to switch from this keyboard to a normal keyboard like that i have on my laptop and the answer is i don't have any problems really i don't know our brain is like really really good to to handle all, all of these different things and trust me when i when i switch to my laptop it takes maybe minute or two and i'm working like i never use a split ergonomic keyboard but still i somewhat try to make it similar as a regular keyboard because i'm also usually uh, working on a laptop itself so i want that transition to be even more seamless so for example i have my uh, backspace and enter keys in in like similar locations so let me briefly go through the layers that i have the first one or the last one in this case is like a system layer so on this layer I, I have like keys volume up volume down mute play stop and stuff like that then we have my function layer so i have my function keys in this layer and after that we have my number and uh, symbols layer so above i have my numbers and below i have symbols if you can see they are also like more or less what you can get on a standard keyboard and let me show you this actually so like we just saw check the minimum movement so i am on my home row and i need numbers i just do this minimum movement i need symbol like that for example bracket i only do that so pretty pretty cool let's go back and the last one is this shortcut layer so i have a couple of shortcuts configured here as, as you can see for example these shortcuts will take me straight to a particular app for example this one will take me to slack my browser my editor terminal and notion so it's really really easy and comfortable to switch my apps and back to the main layer also you can see all of these keys are for my layers so for example these these two outer keys is for my function layer and system layer and they are in these posi positions because i rarely use them but these two keys are that will take me to my numbers and shortcut layers so it is right under my thumbs really really nice really comfortable without moving my fingers much and that is the point of everything right to be as much as possible on your home row rather than moving around and stuff like that and also like i show you earlier with the backlight you can see here how i configured specific color to each key here as well so when i switch to this layer it is really really nice and really really easy to see right if i like forget something i can i i, I can have a glance and see what is going on and the way you configure a key here is like brilliant so let's say i want to configure some key i will go to modify layout and let's say this one and this is the powerful part of it so for example you can configure when you tap a key you can trigger like let's say h okay but also when you hold it down you can trigger something else for example i don't know let's say letter i and you can also add modifiers to that uh, to that key for example left control uh, le sorry left shift left control and option so basically when i hold this key it will trigger left shift left control left option plus i beautiful and this is not all so for example if you double tap the key like quickly tap tap you will trigger something else and also you have a fourth option if you like tap it and hold it you can then have something even different so basically like this is way too much to have on a single key of course but i just wanted to show you the power of it so you can do you can it is like it is like really really a joy to play with it to 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 find a like optimum optimum flow optimum uh config beautiful beautiful and also besides that you can set a specific color to the key let's say this one and you're good to go beside this you have this combo feature so basically if we see here this means when when i hit together w and r it will trigger enter key and if i hit like s and f it will it will trigger space 
how I use this actually is like when I'm editing uh, these YouTube videos, you're mostly using your mouse to move around, cut stuff, blah, blah, blah. But I don't want to reach with my left hand on the right side of the keyboard to hit space, to hit enter and stuff like that. So my hand is resting on my left side, right? And I have these two controls that are really, really handy to me. So again, really powerful stuff. You can do really whatever you want. And when you're finished with everything, you can just sit, compile this. After it is done, just say save to keyboard. There is a button on the keyboard that you press. Press it, connect. You're good to go. You can back, go back to our, to our layer. And yeah, this is, I believe, one of the best ways to configure your keyboard. And you can have like a bunch of different layouts. These two, I think, yes, this is for my Ergodox keyboard. Let's check it out. Yeah, this is this is Ergodox. So this is my layout when I was using Ergodox keyboard, actually. Back to my Voyager. You can see here that we have a like history of, of all of our changes. Today, we updated the config. I really like Oryx. I really enjoy it. And with all of this, uh, what is mentioned, if you are looking to get yourself a like ergonomic split keyboard, I'm pretty sure you will not go wrong with, with, with ZSC Voyager. It is really, really good keyboard in my opinion. But besides everything that I, that I mentioned, there are a couple of cons uh, to this uh, whole thing. The first thing like in general about split and ergonomic keyboards is the a bit steeper learning curve, right? So it is pretty different from the standard keyboards that we are used to, but honestly, it is not that scary. In three, four weeks, you will be productive. Month and a half, two months, you will not want to touch anything else. Another thing is that generally they are a bit expensive, but for me, like every premium product uh, costs a bit more money. And the way how I look at it is like, this is basically an investment in future me, right? And the third thing that I want to mention, and it is more or less related specifically to this uh, ZSA Voyager keyboard, it is that it is wired. I hate cables and I really hope ZSA will, uh, will give us a wireless option. When that day comes, it will be, I believe, a perfect one. Okay, so to conclude everything so far, I think we as programmers, like every other craftsman, right, should invest in our tools. We spent a lot of hours using them and I think it is important to have the best we can find. Uh, first of all, for our health, then ease of use, ergonomics, and the last, like the pure joy of using it. Also, I thank God don't have any problems with my wrists, but I want that it stays like that. But to be honest, regardless of the keyboard that you use, that they say Voyager or something different, I think the best way we can ensure that our hands and our body in general stays healthy is like exercise. I don't know, build those muscles, go to gym, box, uh, do something else with your hand besides typing on a keyboard, right? Or maybe using a spoon, <laughs> okay? It is really important for us. So that is it, guys. Once again, thank you very much for watching. I hope it was useful for you. And if you liked it, maybe give me a thumbs up and also maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss uh, similar content like this. Until next time, take care and see you later. Bye.